Hello, my name is Stuart Hamblin and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm posting this video partly because I wanted to celebrate the fact that last week I reached uh, 6,000 subscribers on the channel and I can't thank those people who have subscribed, I can't thank you enough and also I can't thank enough those people who have taken the time to leave messages for me underneath the videos giving feedback about the videos, what they've uh, enjoyed and how they're progressing. Um, I, I really appreciate you taking the time, those of you who have, have done that. And to celebrate the reaching 6,000 subscribers, I thought it'd be time to post some new Feldenkrais content. I haven't posted any new content um, for the past couple of months. Reasons for that are multiple. Um, it's been a challenge, as I'm sure it has for many of you, the emergence from the lockdown period and trying to sort out my classes and um, work. And then also I've been working on the draft of a second book, um, which is more to do with my Fitzit series, helping people who have had hip or knee replacement surgery um, to, to help them with their walking after the surgery. So it's not that I've been idle, it's just that don't seem to be enough hours in the day or week, weeks in the, in the year. So, but today's lesson, which I'm excited to teach you, it, it, I intend it to be uh, really a progression to the Happy Hips, Happy Knees, Happy Feet series, which I know many of you have loved the lessons in that series. And I thought it was time to um, progress that work if, if we can. And it's the first in a series of lessons that I hope to share with you over the um, forthcoming week, weeks and months. I, I call it a progression because some of the positions in the lesson are, have their own challenges. Um, uh, um, so always take things easy and nothing in the lesson is obligatory, so if you're in pain, don't do anything. If you need extra time to rest, then pause the video and um, uh, be kind to yourself when doing the lesson. It's uh, a fascinating lesson that addresses an issue that for many people is problematic. Um, and it's the difficulty that many people have in taking their hips backwards. So just to give you an example of that, um, many people find sitting upright with their legs stretched out in front of them uh, a real challenge. And what happens is they round their back and they have real difficulty coming to sit uh, on the top of their sit bones and that pattern and that pattern and I hope you can see me and that pattern of being unable or finding it difficult to take the hips backwards you often see the same issue with a person standing hips are tucked under and you can see that that affects the sh shape of my spine. It begins to um, encourage a kyphosis and a head forward position. So this ability to stand, to lengthen the hips backwards um, uh, is important in standing. It's also important for something like sitting, sitting weight transference, to be able to direct the hips backwards to sit down and also it's an important ability for being able to squat squat easily um, on your on your heels so it's a lesson that has great functional um, value um, so let's begin and I'm going to just use a little bit of support underneath my head come to lie down down on your mat. Notice I have got a brand new mat. Uh, it's duck green and the reason for that is a couple of my students have told me it's quite difficult to see some of my movements when I'm teaching blue on blue. So I'm hoping this will make things a bit clearer for you. But just take a moment when you're lying down to notice the overall contact into the floor that you make. 
um, how much of the legs are making contact, uh, how is the pelvis making contact. Again, it's very common to notice a discrepancy it, that one side of the pelvis is heavier into the floor than the other. You might find a similar issue with the way the ribs are lying. Are you feeling the weight more to one side of the chest than the other? Um, is one shoulder heavier than the other? So all these are details are interesting to note at the beginning of the lesson. And then also just get an impression of how much of your back is in contact with the mat. So for, again, for many people, what you'll find is that the ribs are pushed up there's a lot of work going on in the back muscles and it's hard for them to allow the back to rest to rest down fully. So, okay, we're not trying to correct anything at this stage, um, just noticing these details to come back to uh, at the end of the lesson. And then just um, begin to roll the head and eyes a little bit from one side to the other. So just to remind you, in a Feldenkrais lesson, we're not trying to stretch muscles, we're not trying to force a range of motion. We're just looking really for what's easy, easy to do. And it, and it may be that you'll notice a difference in the way that the head is turning to the left or to the right. So for me, I'm feeling as I begin the lesson, it's easier to roll my head to the to the left, um, and that's partly because my ribs settle down onto the floor more easily on the left hand side, whereas to the right I feel less participation of the, of the ribs on the right hand side, and therefore the turning to the right is coming more from the neck. Again, interesting, for me it's still quite early in the morning, I've not had enough cups of tea for sure. <laughs> we'll see, it, see how we, we get on. Please bring, once you're ready, your two legs to standing. And uh, something I like to teach at the beginning of my lessons that I um, teach to my students here in Rutland is really just by way of a little warm-up, to imagine that your pelvis is lying on a clock and on this clock 12 o'clock is towards the head and 6 o'clock is towards the feet. Could you begin by rolling your pelvis to 12 o'clock towards the head and then towards 6 o'clock towards the feet. So you're just gently exploring and uh, maybe pressing down gently into the feet to roll to 12 o'clock and you think of the feet becoming light to help tip the pelvis towards 6 o'clock. So again, just, just exploring your ability to roll the pelvis in these two directions, 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Yeah. And just notice that when you go to 12 o'clock, your lower back comes closer to the floor. I can feel it pressing down into the mat. And when you go to six o'clock, the arch of the lower back increases and it's the tip of your tailbone that's diving down, maybe even pressing, pressing into the mat. So just to 12 to six o'clock, good. And then just notice what's happening with your ribs and your chest. Are you tending to keep the ribs very held as you go to 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock? And if that's the case, just have one hand on your breastbone and one hand on your lower tummy. And when you think of rolling the pelvis to 12 o'clock towards the head, just think that the chest is sliding down or softening down or being pulled down towards the pelvis uh, and then as you go to six o'clock think of the the breastbone lengthening away from the pubic bone so in other words <clears throat> we're including the idea that the movement of the chest and the ribs is part of this 12 o'clock 
and six o'clock movement. So a more global kind of definition of 12 o'clock when all the tummy muscles are engaged, the, the ribs are down, the back is therefore down, and when you go to six o'clock, there's a more of a global arching of the spine. I can feel the area of my spine between my shoulder blades lifting a little bit away or coming lighter away from the, from the mat. Good. Pause. Please do that today and take a take a rest. When you come to rest, um, again, if you need to pause the video, then please pause it. But just roll the head and eyes a little bit to the one side and then the other. And then please come to lie on your right hand side. So I'm just going to flip round so that um, when I'm on my right hand side, you can see my front. front. And then have your um, two arms just comfortably stretched out in front of you. So if you need support underneath the head, um, please take it. You might need a little bit of cushioning just to give you, make sure there's no strain in the, in the neck. Um, I'm going to settle for the thinner mat to begin with. Um, and then please straighten both your legs in front of you, just to where you comfortably can. So don't don't kind of force force any position, but just straight straighten both legs in front of you, um, wherever you comfortably can. And the important thing is that the legs should be straight. <clears throat> and then bring your right, sorry, your left onto the front of the left thigh. So not the side, the front of the left thigh. And then just begin to reach your left palm along the left leg in the direction of the, of the foot. So you're just exploring your ability to glide your left arm along the left leg or thigh. So just gently exploring your ability to lengthen the left arm along the left thigh. And then as you continue to do this, have the idea that you're lifting or moving the left leg in the direction of the head. And then you come back. So there's two things going on. You're sliding the left palm along the left leg and you're just thinking of moving that straight left leg in the direction of the of the head. So I'm not lifting the leg in the air, keeping it low on the floor as much as possible and as you're just gliding the left arm along the left leg, have the idea that you're lifting the leg or moving the leg in the direction of the head. So just doing a few more of these and just pay attention, if you will, to first of all, what's going on with the head. Is your head tending to slide on the mat to follow the arm, which is one possibility, or are you able to keep it pretty much still in space? So as you're sliding the left arm along the left leg and lifting the left leg, leg towards the arm. Good. And then also just notice what are you doing with your middle, the chest and the tummy. So for some people what they'll do is contract and round the back to try and get the arm further along along the left. So just again, just notice if that's the case. Good. And then pause, leave it alone, and come and try that on the left hand side. 
it. I'm, I'm just going to flip so that I can look at the camera. So again, have the support underneath the head if you need it. Have your two arms stretched out in front of you initially, and then position your legs so they're stretched out comfortably in front of you, but, but straight. That's important to have them straight. And then have your right palm just resting on the front of the right thigh. And then just kind of explore what's it like to slide your right palm along the right leg. And at the same time, you're thinking of moving the right leg in the direction of the head. So there's no ambition here to try and touch the foot, to try and get anywhere. You're, it's, we're really just exploring how are you doing this at the moment. So is your head tending to roll forward to try and facilitate the movement of the arm? Are you doing a big tummy and chest contraction to try and slide the arm along the leg? So in other words, are you 12 o'clocking to, to, to try and do this? And just as you explore a few more of these movements, um, see if you can check in with the jaw, make sure you're not gripping the jaw, the breath is nice and easy. Just a few more movements. Pause, leave it alone, and come and take a rest for a moment on, on the back. And just um, whatever it is you notice, then um, uh, um, pay attention to that. So for me, one of the things I could definitely feel in that brief exploration was um, it's asking some of my hamstrings, those muscles at the back of the thigh, to lengthen, to lengthen. Okay. Just roll that head and eyes a little bit right to left, see how that is. Interestingly, it's improving to the right for me, the rolling of the head, just that, those small movements with the ribs. And then please, once more, come to lie on your right hand side. As we explore these variations, I'm trying, to, just because I have to keep in mind the length of the video, my videos are quite long anyway, so I won't do too many repetitions. If you want more time to explore some of these lovely movements, just pause the recording and um, take that time. Um, please bring your legs once more stretched out in front of you and have your left palm once more on the left leg, so as we did before. And begin again to just lengthen the left arm, left palm along the front of the leg and have the idea you're moving the leg just minimally in the direction of the head, but keeping it low. And this time, as you lengthen the arm to, along the leg, see if you can allow the movement to cause the head to tilt back slightly. So it's not moving the head forward on the floor, it's just as there's this little rocking of the back of the head, just tilting back a little bit and then coming back. So you're sliding the arm along the leg as you bring the leg a little bit up, but think, can you allow the back of the head to tilt back? And what that means effectively is actually we're trying for this movement not just to be in the head. It's that six o'clock movement, the tilting of the pubic bone back, the tailbone back. And so your spine is gently extending. 
they, it's, we're trying to really, as often in these Feldenkrais lessons, activate this capacity of your middle, of your spine, to, to be involved in the movement, to be integrated into the movement. And that's why you don't need to do a big movement with the arm, a big movement with the leg. It's really it's what's happening in our middle that we're interested in. So just gently sliding the arm forward, see if you can let that six o'clock pattern cause the back, the back of the head to tilt back. And as my tailbone pushes down, I can really feel that challenge to my hamstrings, those muscles to just lengthen, let go a little bit. Good. Pause. Leave it alone. And come and try that on the other, other side. So, on the left hand side, left hand side, two legs stretched out in front of you. Comfortably. And then have your right palm on the on the right thigh, right thigh, and see again. Can you begin to just caress the right palm along the right leg, as you're just gently moving the right leg in the direction of the head, and see if you can feel or allow, as you make this movement, the sense that the back of the head is tilting backwards back of the head is tilting backwards. And therefore, therefore, can you allow your spine, your tip of the tailbone to move back as you're reaching the arm forward. Nice and gently. You can feel that there's a little rotation of the spine as it's also going into extension as you're just reaching the arm forward and back. Good. Leave it alone and come and rest rest on the on the back for a minute. And just check in with how you're feeling. And then, if you can, just um, look at me on the on the screen. I'll see if I can give you an idea of that movement of the spine. So, as you're reaching the arm forward, forward, we're trying not to round the back, but we're trying to extend, extend the back as the arm arm goes forward so that the back of the head tilts, tilts backwards. To give you a sense of that, to give you a sense of that in another position, please have your, lie on your back with your legs, legs bent up, and then bring your arms into a triangle position. So my two palms are in contact, my arms are long, and make sure the hands are above your breastbone as opposed to above the fa face. So just pointing straight up towards the ceiling in line with your breastbone. And see if you can arch the back, arch the back to, with the idea of lengthening the arms and then come back. So you're arching the back to the tip of the tailbone points down towards the floor. The top of my shoulders are down, but the area of the spine from between my shoulders down towards the tip of the tailbone is lifted away from the mat. So just gently exploring your ability to do that. And then at the, um, you can, as you're sort of reaching the arms up, but through the action of the spine, see if you can allow the back of the head to tilt back. So you're reaching the arms up, letting the back of the head tilt back. Okay. Reach, 
pushing the arms up to allow the back of the head tilt back. And then once you've done that, see if you can stay and just lift and lower the feet a few times, keeping the back in this arch position, the head tilted backwards. And then let it go. Now, I've done that with bent legs. It's also possible to do it with straight legs, lifting both legs just to get that idea. It's very similar to a yoga pose, it's called fish pose, this action, where it's an arch, just lifting and then coming back down. And then just leave that alone and um, rest for a moment. So just hopefully that will have given you the idea, that hopefully that will have given you the idea of the kind of shape of the spine that we're trying to introduce into these sideline positions. So please come to lie on your right hand side again and have your two legs stretched out in front of you. And this time have both palms, if possible, on the front of both legs. So bo both palms on the front of the thighs, good. And then think of lengthening both arms towards the legs, um, along the legs, as you think of just gently lifting the legs towards the, in the direction of the head. So not a big movement. And see if you can find this arch position so that the back of the head tilts backwards as you're just thinking of sliding the hands a little bit along the front of the thigh. And then pause and alternate once sliding the left palm and then the right palm, left palm, and then the right palm. So I can feel as I slide the left arm forward, the shoulder is coming forward and it's creating a pull. If I'm allowing my tailbone to go back and the back of the head to go back, it's creating a pull into an area of the spine between the shoulder blades. Leave it alone, leave it alone, and then come and try that on the other side. So, um, although this lesson is very much about the hips, it's also one of the reasons I've really enjoyed practicing it and teaching it is the way it brings movement into the area of the spine between the shoulder blades. And um, many people, that is an area of kind of um, rigidity. Um, and um, uh, hopefully this lesson will clarify that that rigidity often has something to do with what's going on with the hip, hip joints. Please have both legs stretched out in front of you, so lying on the left side and with both palms resting as comfortably as they can on the front of the legs. And then try to lengthen both arms along the thighs and that you have this idea, minimal idea, of lifting the legs in the direction of the head. And see, can you do this six o'clock movement? Can you think that it's your tailbone going back, your spine, not just the lower back, but the air between the shoulder blades is extending, and that causes the back of the head to tilt back. Just tilting back as a consequence of the movement. And then pause and try to explore it, reaching the right palm first, and then the left palm along the left thigh. So you're just noticing what difference in terms of the movement, what difference in pull does it create through the spine 
to slide the right arm compared to the left. And then try reaching both again. Hips back, tailbone back, spine extending. And then please leave that away and come and take a, a rest. I must say, I'm enjoying my new mat, <laughs> the duck green mat. I hope it's making the footage a bit um, clearer. But just notice how that all feels. It's rolling the head a little bit to the side. And then please leave that alone, bend the knees, and once more, come to lie on your right hand side. So, uh, right arm is just comfortably in front of me. Um, stretch your two legs in front of you once more, but this time take your left leg back and down behind you. So you keep the right leg in front, straight to the degree that you're able to, and you take your left leg back and behind you. Now, as that leg goes back and behind, it will bend. It's fine to let it, let it bend, but you're trying to take certainly the heel, the heel behind you. And then um, have your left arm on the on the on the side of the left thigh. And then point your right arm down along the right thigh. And then just see, can you lengthen the right arm down along the thigh, release, and then the right arm reach that along the right thigh, and release. So we're just alternating, lengthening the left arm down the left thigh and then the right arm forward along the right thigh and trying to bring that right thigh up a little bit. So again, not big movements externally. Please don't try to make them big but really just see if you can use them as an opportunity to discover how your middle is or isn't, isn't moving. Now, as you reach the right arm down, sorry, the left arm down the left thigh, as you continue to reach, you'll feel uh, those, as the shoulder moves down for, away from the ear, those ribs on the left hand side are sort of concertinaing together. And if you were to reach a little bit further, it raises the possibility <laughs> of the, the head lifting and then you come back down. So just stay with reaching the left arm down so you, you feel oh, the reach of the arm causes some of those ribs to come together underneath the armpit which presses a certain part of the spine down but then creates this pull that makes the lifting of the head fairly easy. But don't turn the head towards the ceiling, stay looking to your forward. So it's a side bending action in the spine to lift the head. And then you slowly come back down. So once you've just paid attention to that movement of the left arm, just to explore reaching the right arm a little bit forward along the right thigh. And See if you can feel there's this time it's the tilting of the head backwards. Being trying to make that a global spinal event, tailbone pushing back, chest expand, um, lifting, and then alternate once lengthening the left arm down so as to lift the head but keeping it on the side, and then lengthening the right arm forward. So you're alternating between the two arms, but can you feel oh, this lovely movement 
it's bringing into that area of the spine just below C7 around that area that area between the shoulder blades Good. and then pause please leave that alone and come in and uh, lie on the other, other side <coughs> Again, I can't, I, the, the reason I, well, lots of reasons I love these lessons is the way that they tease movement out of areas of the spine that are, um, for many, quite um, challenged in terms of movement. So, um, uh, uh, always be gentle and kind with yourself. It's often got very little to do with the external movement. It's much more about how you're organising internally. Have the two legs stretched out in front of you. Take your, this time, your right leg back behind you. So it's kind of like a hurdler's position. Uh, a hurdler's position. The right leg sweeps behind you. And then have your right palm on the right side of the right thigh. Left hand on the left and just try to reach your right arm down the right thigh and then the left arm forward along the left, left thigh. So just alternating and see can you feel that the, the sliding of the right arm can cause the head to lift as it is on the side and then the sliding of the left arm causes again the back of the head to tilt back. So just alternating between those two um, movements of the arm. Again, just nice, easy breathing. Head isn't lifting high, doesn't matter because we're you um, really getting our spine to lift the head rather than it just being in the neck muscles. Good. Okay. Once you've explored, try reaching both arms. What does that do? Together. Both arms together. Good. And then leave that away and come and take a, a rest. The other lessons, so again I've pitched this as kind of more intermediate lesson, probably certainly helps to have done the uh, Happy Hips um, series that's on the channel, um, but there's some very interesting lessons without giving too much away that follow on from this in this sequence that I hope to share with you. So, um, as you've come to rest on the back, just take a moment to notice how that all feels. And then please come to lie on your right hand side again. So I'll flip over just to show you. And then this time, this time, have your left leg in front of you, so the top leg in front of you, and take your right leg behind you. So my right leg is bent, is it? sweeps behind me and then to the degree that you can bring your left hand onto the floor behind you so that means that left shoulder has to turn back to bring the left hand on the floor behind you some of you might only be able to get the fingertips down because of the lack of rotation in the chest absolutely fine but I try to have some part of the left hand down and then turn your right arm down to palm down so just bending the elbow so that both arms can slide along the floor in the direction of the of the feet but keep the head turned on its side on its side Okay, that's the starting position, a lot of words. 
but it's the underneath leg bent back, two arms are down by your side, your head is turned to the right. And then just once more, alternate, sliding your left arm down towards the feet, and then the right arm down towards the feet, left arm, and then right arm. So if you notice, I'm not sliding my head, this, keeping the head pretty much where it is, and I'm just kind of exploring the difference in pull that the reach of the two arms create. So as I slide my left arm down, I'm feeling, again, the, the shoulders moving back, those ribs bending, once more, I could lift the head on its side and then as I slide the right arm down, again there's that tilting of the head back. back. I can feel my hips releasing back a little bit. So alternating, sliding once the left and then the right. Again, just so I could spend, <laughs> not hours, but a long time just exploring slightly different angles for the reach of that left arm and the right arm, really kind of paying attention to what it's doing to that area of the spine just below the, the neck. Once you've um, explored alternating the arms, try to reach both arms down together and feel, ah, oh, because that made the lifting of the head a bit easier. So still looking to the side, so I'm feeling big coming together of my ribs on the left hand side to facilitate that. Good. And then the next time you've lifted the head, can you stay there and lift the legs? And then come back down. So you you reach both arms down, lift the head. That brings the ribs together. See if you can lift both legs. And then look at the feet. And then come back down. So I reach, lift, head and legs, looking at the feet. And then come back. So I reach, lifting of the head, looking at the feet. And come back. And just do one more. Oh, big side bending to balance to contraction in the side and then rest back down. Isn't that wacky? <laughs> Love it. Please come to lie on your left hand side and this time take your um, underneath leg back and your top leg forward. So right leg is forward, left leg is back behind you. And then um, see if you can turn the chest enough to bring your right hand on the floor behind you, but stay looking to the left. And then both up, the left palm is turned down as well in the direction of the feet. And see if you can explore all reaching first the right arm down towards the feet and then the left arm down towards the feet. Once the right arm and then the left arm. And see as the right arm lifts, can you find, ah, oh, that reach creates the right conditions for the lifting of the head on its side because those ribs, where my hand is here, um, coming together to lift the head. And then explore what's it like to reach the left arm down. Maybe just try slightly different angles of the reach. See, it can, again, can you feel the head tilting backwards as a consequence of that reaching of the arm? And then alternate, reaching once the right and then the left. The right and then the left. And then pause and see if you can reach both down 
to lift the head. And then stay there and see could you lift the legs as they are. Come back down. So you're reaching both arms down to create the conditions to lift the head. And then see could you lift the legs. And look at the feet. And then come back down. Let's go and try that once more. So reach, lift the head, look at the feet as you're lifting the legs. Good. And then come back down. Leave it alone. Kind of lie on the back for a second. And then just again notice the contact. Roll the head and eyes again a little bit. Right and left. So again, suddenly um, I feel much more participation of the ribs on the right hand side when I um, turn the head to the right. Good. And then um, just bend the knees and one more. Come to lie on your right hand side with both legs stretched out in front of you. And just go back to reaching the left arm along the left thigh as you think of bringing it towards the head. So it's very interesting in the class that I taught by Zoom because I had a good view of a lot of people's backs. It's just amazing how by the end of the lesson people's spines were much more involved in the reaching of the arm. I could feel that ripple of extension going through my spine head tilting back. Try with both arms. Is that a little bit easier to do? Good. And then leave it alone and come and test that on the other, other side. So both legs stretched in front. And just reach your right arm along the right thigh of the thigh coming towards the head. Is that a little bit clearer, that, that global movement of the spine? And then try with both arms. And then please leave it alone. Hopefully you felt a difference and come to lie on the back. And then just roll the head and eyes a little bit from side to side. Wow, notice how you feel. So, um, once you've um, just checked in, roll to one side and to uh, come up. And um, I'll end the lesson formally there. Um, as I mentioned before, it's the, uh, the first in a series that um, these movements progress into um, other transitions and even coming to sit. Uh, uh, take a moment when you come standing just to notice how that all feels. And maybe one way, just one way you can just think of applying this in the days ahead is, you see a lot of people sit like this with the tailbone tucked under, the back is rounding. See if you can, maybe sitting in a car seat or driving, that you really just think of getting your hips back and underneath you, underneath you in sitting. See if you can just have this idea that your hips are moving back backwards to support the spine. So thank you very much again to the 6,000 plus subscribers Hope you enjoyed this uh, new lesson and um, I look forward to um, bringing more to you in the, in the weeks ahead. Um, stay safe, be well, move well. Thank you.